Good morning, everybody. Uh, the topic today is very important to the South Suburbs, the South Suburban Airport. We have two fantastic uh, people here. Rick Bryan, he's the Senior Advisor to Congresswoman Robin Kelly and Chair of the Chicago Southland Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee. We'll facilitate the conversation on the current status of the South Suburban Airport site and economic development associated with it. And we also have Paul Ahern. He is the president and owner of Tandem Development Group, a commercial real estate <laughs> developer specializing in industrial airport, healthcare, and mixed use projects. He formerly worked with Coldwell Banker, Richard Ellis, and was a longtime chief investment and operating officer for Center Point Property. So we have two distinguished guests. Rick. Rick. Rick, you're, you're, you're first on the, on, the, on the chopping block here. <laughs> okay, can everybody hear me now? Gotcha. Okay, so I, I don't need the uh, PowerPoint at, this, at the moment, so I'm just gonna start off with some comments and I'll finish up with a, a short PowerPoint. Um, so if, if my presentation were a newspaper, the headline might read, South Suburban Airport has its best week in at least eight years. Um, we're getting some traction now, folks, which is necessary because we've almost reached that point where it's a do or die situation for this airport. Uh, we cannot afford four more years of inaction if we really want to build this airport. And of course, the, uh, the fierce urgency of now is, an, is, is upon us. And the fierce urgency of now is just another way of saying this is a call to action. So we, we uh, have some momentum, we need to keep it up. Um, as you all know, the South Suburban Airport was initially pushed by the FAA as a passenger oriented airport more than two decades ago, but that has evolved thanks to a surging popularity of e-commerce, air cargo and just-in-time delivery, complemented by shifts in the consumer shopping habits, then exacerbated and solidified by a global pandemic, and further fueled by the current trend of reshoring manufacturing and service industries for more made in USA production, we have seen a major change in the, and a major expansion of the need for air cargo capacity across the country and here in the Southland. And we've all experienced that and seen those trends take place right before our very eyes over the last 10 years. Now, as I've discussed before, uh, airports are the largest jobs generator in the world and air cargo for many years now has been the fastest growing segment of air traffic. In recent years, and in just about every major metro area across the United States, we've seen significant expansions and investments in air cargo facilities. And air cargo carriers have a distinct pattern when they invest in, into big cities. The UPSs and FedExs and Amazons of the world like to have two air cargo airports, they usually select secondary airports because they're less congested and less crowded. They prefer that the two airports are located on opposite ends of the metro area so they can go quickly in all directions and avoid the urban core. They like to have their two airports also located near the edge of suburbia where there's plenty of developable land available. They like to locate them near existing transportation assets like railroads and interstates. And finally, the carriers like to locate air cargo airports near warehousing and logistics hubs. Sounds just like the South Suburban Airport plan. So I said we were gaining some momentum. We had the best uh, week in, in eight years, uh, and I'll explain that. Last week in Springfield, a State House committee voted 9-0 with bipartisan support to approve State Rep Will Davis's bill which if and when enacted would require the state of Illinois to begin the process of soliciting private sector developers to finance and build the airport. Specifically, Representative Bill Davis's House Bill 2531, which was co-sponsored by representatives Debbie Myers-Martin, Anthony DeLuca and Nick Smith, directs the state of Illinois to prepare and issue a request for qualifications from developers within six months of passage of the law. That bill now goes to the House floor. 
the first step passage, the, this is the first step in the passage of the bill, and as re, and the success was a large result of a collaborative effort led by the Southland Chamber of Commerce, South Suburban Mayors and Managers Association, and the Chicago Southland Economic Development Corporation, among others. Pushed by these organizations, nearly 300 proponents weighed in to support the bill. Those advocates included 29 mayors, multiple chambers of commerces and economic development corporations, many leading businesses and small businesses, labor leaders, unions, faith leaders, civil rights leaders, healthcare providers, educators and colleges, and everyday residents from Cook, Will, and Kankakee counties. Combined, those advocates represented hundreds of thousands of Illinois residents. And our, I want to give a special shout out to the Southland Chamber, as I said, and our members, Kate O'Malley and Terry Winfrey, uh, for leading the effort, as well as uh, Christy De Laurentiis from the SSMMA and Reggie Greenwood from the EDC. And again, to put all this in perspective, it was getting that bill passed was the best day for the South Suburban Airport in the past eight years. But that's only step number one. The bill, as Terry mentioned, the bill still needs to be approved by the full Illinois House, then a Senate committee, then the full Senate, and then the governor needs to sign it into law or not. The Davis bill has generated lots of media, media attention, including great front page stories in the Daily South Town last week and in the Chicago Tribune and, Day, and the Crane's Chicago business yesterday. There's also more stories to come on Channel 9, the Homewood Chronicle, uh, Homewood, Bossmore Chronicle, and others uh, soon. And uh, proponents, when they were weighing in to support the airport, stated a lot of the a lot of benefits and, and the rationale for building the South Suburban Airport last week. And I wanna just recap some of those for you. Um, here's some of the bullet points. Eastern Will and Southern Cook counties are experiencing an industrial boom of billions of dollars of new investment in logistics, manufacturing, and industrial space. The economics driving this investment are the reshoring of manufacturing and an e-commerce explosion which has seen the construction of over 10 million square feet of new industrial space near Bolt Field in Eastern Will County. So these are comments again made at the hearing last week. South Suburban Airport will also be a state-of-the-art environmentally driven airport powered by solar and hydrogen microgrids, and it will reduce truck traffic on the roads because South Suburban Airport is in, located in close proximity to scores of distribution centers. South Suburban Airport will become an innovative technology hub for drones and renewable energy. South Suburban Airport will stop the bleeding of air cargo jobs out of Illinois and into Gary, Indiana and Milwaukee, Wisconsin. South Suburban Airport will attract $1 billion in new industrial development and create over 50,000 direct and indirect jobs in manufacturing, logistics, and transportation. And all that will start after the next step which is to seek private sector partners to build the airport and a surrounding industrial park via a public-private partnership as outlined in House Bill 2531. So now I wanna run through a short PowerPoint, updated PowerPoint to demonstrate that these things that I'm saying are not um, my, my opinions or even the opinions of some of our supporters, but these are the conclusions of many studies that have been done in recent years by the air cargo industry, academics, logistics experts, and even the state of Illinois. And all of those studies include the same thing, that Chicago needs another air cargo airport. Without it, we'll continue to lose jobs to surrounding states. And perhaps most importantly, the new cargo airport will not negatively impact any existing airports, not O'Hare, not Midway, not Rockford. So I wanna start now with a, just a brief uh, update of my PowerPoint, which some of you all have seen before, so bear with me if you have, but uh, I just want to, you know, illustrate some points again. So uh, next slide, please, Alessandro. Okay, so this was a study re just released last fall by Caldwell Banker Richard Ellis, which is the world's largest uh, commercial real estate company. And they say companies, their, their study concludes that companies want to be located near airports. Um, that 
Right now, transportation costs comprise 45 to 70 percent of the supply chain costs for them. But if they move their um, warehouses closer to airports or they locate airports closer to their warehouses, they they only cost the cost for storing products is three to six percent. So you save a lot of money if you have the airport and the distribution centers located next to each other. And as was pointed out earlier, the reshoring of manufacturing operations is also causing a, is a catalyst for locating near airports because by definition, if companies are reshoring their global companies and they need access to uh, many continents, which they can only get to by air or at least quickly. So that's, a, that's an industry study of why companies locate near airports. Next slide, please. This, just, this is from the same study. It just shows all the different types of industries that benefit from airports. And you can see if, it, if you're in any of these businesses that are charted here, you'll, you'll benefit from the airport. Um, it's not just uh, logistics. It's all of these other types of things. It's not just e-commerce. It's, it's moving products and, and of all kinds. Next slide, please. This shows the types of products that run through airports are typically high-end products. And if you're in the business with, when you deal with any of these products, you'll also benefit from the South Suburban Airport. Again, this is the Caldwell Banker Richard Ellis study of who use, uh, what products move through airports. Next slide, please. So as I said earlier in the air cargo business, air, air, the air cargo carriers like to locate near airports. And you can see that right now, the primary uh, cargo airport in the region is Rockford. There's one Amazon facility up there. The rest of them are all much closer to South Suburban Airport. So we, we fit that model of being close on the outer, outer fringe of the suburban area uh, at the opposite end of, the, on, of a second cargo airport and closer to the uh, facilities that they're gonna service. So we're in a prime location. And you can see Gary on the map there also, they have a small uh, cargo operation, but they're planning to expand as is Milwaukee. So we, that's our competition is Gary and Milwaukee. And, but we're, we're at the best, we have the best location long-term uh, because we have the developable land and all the rep, transportation connections that everybody around here is familiar with. Next slide, please. If you take that slide and, and you apply it nationally, this is what it looks like. All the Blue and gray dots are Amazon facilities. And again, this is just Amazon, but this applies to Walmart, Target, anyone that does uh, air cargo. Um, this shows the distribution centers in the blue and the gray and the number of airports in the red. And you can see we have the largest cluster of, uh, in, of industrial and, and cargo oriented logistics centers. And we only have one major airport Rockford, and we have a, a slight presence at Midway, I mean, at O'Hare, but we, we are underserved. You can see most major cities have two airports and much smaller marketplace. These are studies done by DePaul University. Uh, next slide, please. So we're underserved, in other words. Um, the, the model for what we're trying to do is Alliance Airport in Fort Worth, Texas. This was built by Ross Perot Jr. back in 1989. People laughed at him and said, why did you build an airport out in the middle of nowhere? Well, his airport today is home, the industrial park that's grown up around his airport that everyone thought was a crazy idea, now is the headquarters of 525 companies, 65,000 people go to work in the industrial park that uh, grows out of this airport. You can see it's located next to a rail yard and near uh, interstate highways. It's got two runways on that map there, uh, just on this picture alone, um, there's three Amazon centers, there's two FedEx centers, there's air, uh, airplane maintenance facilities. So this is a booming airport. It's the fastest, the Alliance area is the fastest growing uh, business uh, region in the state of Texas. And it, it generates, again, 65,000 jobs. Next slide, please. Uh, Amazon Air has been in the process of setting up air cargo hubs all over the country. And as you can see there, but the, the chart, the data shows that air cargo hubs are the fastest growing, that many cities have two air cargo hubs located near each other. And, and all those points I just made earlier, they like to avoid the this core 
for the urban core, and they like to be located near their warehouses. Next slide, please. So we'd be a perfect location out here. And how do I know all this? Because I read stuff. I'm not because I'm smart. Joe Schwederman, the uh, professor at DePaul University, head of their Transportation Institute, has written many articles about air cargo and the growth over the years. And he concludes that Amazon's de-emphasizing major hubs and creating mini hubs, and they uh, will continue to diversify their flights into the region beyond Chicago, Rockford. Next slide, please. Joe Schwederman, who's from uh, Flossmore, by the way, has done multiple studies that make that same point. Uh, uh, in 2021, the GSU commissioned a study with by Randy Wiedemann, who's a nationally known aviation expert on air cargo. Uh, he also did a study and it concluded that Chicago is large enough to accommodate a second air cargo hub to augment Rockford, hence another argument for the need for South Suburban Airport. So that's another study. Um, next slide, please. GSU did it, their own study last year. And, and the, I guess the point here is the second bullet point, the divert, as I mentioned, I don't know if I did mention it, but Rockford, uh, the UPS operations at Rockford has split and now part of it is in Gary, Indiana. They were looking to expand Rockford and they needed another uh, location. So they moved to Gary. And the diversion point number two here, the diversion of flights from Rockford to Gary Airport began in 2019 when UPS expanded to the only regional airport with room to expand. Amazon, FedEx, and other car parcel carriers and last mile logistics providers are also looking at, at another location south, including Gary. We, Gary has a, a short-term advantage over us because they do have an airport, but we have a much better site, better location, better proximity to the warehouses than Gary does and, and much more room to grow. Next slide, please. So the state did a study, they have not released it yet, but the state study concludes that South Suburban Airport offers exactly what the air cargo carriers need. Strong market location, developable land, premier infrastructure and modal connections. It could provide for innovative airport and connections, clean energy, and a platform for drones. So this is a state study, which we hope will be released sometime soon. Um, but they, that confirms everything that the other studies have said and everything I've, I've said today. Next slide, please. Uh, the status, we're 90% of the way done with the land acquisition. All that green is already purchased by the state. The dark blue is unwilling sellers, but the state has money to buy that land and they have quick take authority. So the state could control the entire footprint tomorrow which is 90, they already control 90%. And then the FAA has approved everything. All of the planning has been approved for this airport, except for the final detailed plans. But the, you know, the FAA has approved the need, the location, the size, the airspace, the environmental reviews, how we plan to pay for it. It's, it's all been approved by the FAA. We're just waiting for the final get go from the, the, the green light from the state to get a developer to finish the detailed plan and submit it for approval. Next slide, please. And we got money in the General Assembly to build the connector road from I-57 and Illinois 50 over there on the left uh, into the airport. This will make the air, once, that is, once those connections are done, the airport site will be connected to all of our highways. Rails are surrounding the airport already and that, that all the utilities are gonna run in that corridor of the, those new roads. So. This will be, once this, these improvements are made on I-57, we'll have a dedicated entrance to the road, to the airport with all the utility connections to the site where the private developer will then take over and build the airport. So we're almost shovel ready. Next slide. And so that's, that this is my last slide. It just summarizes that the experts all agree that SSA expands the capacity which we need uh, that Will County is a perfect location due to its proximity to all the markets and its transportation assets and land. It will uh, provide an innovative platform for uh, drone and, and other and next generation air traffic. And the last point, South Suburban Airport supplements and fills existing and future gaps in, the, in our local air freight market. This is an IDOT study. So and again, that's it. Uh, we have a, a question out there from Frank D. Giovanni. Uh, let me pull it up here. 
what type of hurdles are there before they proceed with the South Suburban Airport? Rick or Paul? Well, you know, politics is the big hurdle. We have to get this approved by the General Assembly and the state of Illinois is the uh, landowner and the sponsor of the airport. They have not made a commitment to this airport. They have purchased land. They have done a lot of the pre-planning, but they have not committed finally to, to building the airport. That's the, the bill that Will Davis introduced would, would force the state to put this out to bid and let's see what the private sector says. This airport will be financed by the private sector. It will not be financed by the state of Illinois. And uh, so that's kind of a unique way of, of financing airports. Uh, it's, it's been done around the world for years and years and years, but we haven't built any airports in our country for a long time. So it would be a new model for the U.S. But the, the state has passed legislation that would allow for a public-private partnership to be developed. Just as Paul outlined, Paul has, has read that bill. He understands how it works, and he showed you how it would work. So we, we just need to get the political support lined up. We uh, the, new, the new mayor, mayoral candidates of Chicago have said they support this airport, which is a change because in the past, the mayors of Chicago have opposed this airport, which has been a bit, big political obstacle. But if the, the new mayor or mayoral candidates see that an airport generates jobs not only for the Southland, but for the South Side of Chicago and the state of Illinois. And um, so, you know, we just got to get all the political support lined up. And the, some of that comes from you, us. The business community has to step up and say, we need this airport. This is, you know, this is good for the state of Illinois. It's good for the taxpayers, good for job seekers, good for keeping people in Illinois. So that's the big hurdle. Uh, Ted Slowick asked, what would be your elevator pitch to Governor Pritzker to convince him to support the South Suburban Airport? Rick or Paul? Well, we received um, feedback from the governor. And if anybody read the Tribune article on Saturday, he, he made a comment that, you know, he would like to see, I don't think he's necessarily against it if we just had you know, he's looking for us to come up with someone that would use the airport. And we've, you know, with Rick and Reggie Greenwood and Mark Thompson and our team, we've made a couple pitches to international freighters who would actually land their airplanes and use the buildings that we would build and use the airport. And if we were able to land one of those or even get a, a strong level of interest out of someone like that, I think we would get, I think he would go with it. You know, it's hard for me to say I'm not a political person. I just, you know, I'm I'm a real estate developer and a, hopefully a job creator. And um, the, you know, I think I think we really need a user of some kind to step forward or some corporate. Um, and we've we've gone in a lot of angles, and I can't say enough about the group of the team I've been part of with Rick and Reggie and Mark Thompson and, and JLL. We've tried to get this, you know get this to the top of the pile, but I think we'll really get it to the top of the pile is some level of user interest. But if I had to pitch, you know, my pitch to the governor would be, if you really look at, you know, when we went knocked on the door at the Joliet Arsenal about 25 years ago, as I would say at the turn of the century, and there was no, you know, it was a mess down there. And really that part of Joliet was not good. And, um, we, you know, that Joliet area the, where the arsenal was. And we went down there 25 years ago, came up with this concept that we would build an intermodal there because of the, the cross sections of the, the two major railroads, the UP and the BN were so close together at that location, which is not a lot different than this, that there's just a unique location that it has. But if you look at what happened in Will County in 25 years, just what has happened because the development of those intermodals the jobs, the buildings, the, the, the vacancy, the unemployment has gone, gone to basically, they, they can't find people to work. We cannot find places to get the workers to live around the Joliet area. They have to drive in from far away and truck drivers make $100,000. If you work at Walmart, 97 at Target. And you know, look what's happened there in 25 years. What if we built this airport, what would happen what would 25 years look like now? We need the airport. 
And really this area, the Will County area and this South Suburban area, it really needs the airport. And, and you can't really look at it as something that's gonna turn over tomorrow. You have to look in the future, 25 years from now, 50 years from now, this, Illinois needs this airport. And really the, our, as now as we've taken on a, a, a leadership role in worldwide logistics in Chicago and really South Chicago, you know, an airport's the, you know, it's the next piece of the logistics pie that we really should have. And Ted, I would say that, you know, we're gonna build the first green airport. We're gonna build the first carbon neutral airport in the United States. We're gonna build it in an area of, as Paul pointed out, a diverse population with economic needs. Uh, and if we don't do it, all this business is gonna to go to Gary and Milwaukee. So, you know, it's, it's gonna go somewhere and it might as well go here. We have the best location, we have the best site, uh, we have the best future. So, you know, let's not blow our opportunity when we have a chance. Uh, Wendell Hudson had a question. What type of businesses do you expect to follow the South Suburban Airport creation? Well, we, I showed you that chart of all the businesses that locate near airports. It's virtually everything, commercial, industrial, manufacturing, uh, tech, recreation, pharmaceutical. They all locate. Look at the Northwest suburbs. Every yeah, I don't think that anyone, you know, we've we've had many meetings with international companies to um, and, and freight companies and logistics companies. And, you know, because we're onshoring, you know, we, we lead the world in technology. There's no question about that, the United States. The other countries want the made in the USA products. Specifically, we saw because of COVID, they want our pharmaceuticals. I mean, we were first with the, the um, COVID medications and, the, um, and, and they just want our products as bad as we want to sell them to them. They need our technology. They need our, our advanced pharmaceuticals. And this would give them just in time. You know, there's, there's a cargo carrier was telling me once, he goes, it's pretty simple. He goes, if you're in Asia and you want to get something in the United States, if you put it on a boat and put it on a train and in a truck, it gets here in about 30 days. If you need it in, in the next day, you can put it on a plane, it gets here in 30 hours. And there's a price for everything in between. I think we're gonna be in a position down the road where again, onshoring and manufacturing our pharmaceutical industry and our, and our technology industries here in the Midwest, um, people are gonna want our product and they're gonna want it overseas and they're gonna want it quickly. And that's, that's what we're hearing. That's what we're hearing from the actual logistics companies. So I think we'll have all sorts of people down there. We, I'll tell you, uh, Reggie always uh, gives me leads of some of the people that wanna be in the region. We're seeing a lot of electric vehicle and uh, battery plants kicking around this region. You know, to be, between, to be in between Rivian and Lion Bus, which is in Shanahan, and, you know, then also you have the large Ford facility up off of Torrance Avenue, which is not far from here is easy to get to. So I think we'll see a lot of different, really diverse manufacturing companies. And then, of course, the e-commerce people are already here and they'll take more positions. Uh, another question from Wendell. What's the estimated cost to build the South Suburban Airport? And once construction begins, how long before it is completed? The cost to build the airport itself is probably about 1.2 to $1.5 billion. And that would include some buildings, some cargo buildings on the airport. But each runway is expensive. A runway is probably about $700 million when it's over and done with. Interesting fact about runway construction is it will get the airport completely built. The terminal, well, well here we'll have a cargo terminal, but the um, the tower, the fence, the runways. And then it takes the FAA one year to install and test all their equipment. And that, that process, but the whole process, we've had a timeline done uh, with the engineers, four and a half to five years from the green light. Two years until we really start construction. There's about two years of design left. And as Rick mentioned, we have the FAA environmental impact study 
which will take about a year itself. And that's really the key. And that has been funded, I believe, Rick, in the, in the interchange in the highways, $162 million. Right, that's that, already been done once, but they have to refresh it because it's several years old. They, yeah, that, that is included in that money that the state's already approved. Uh, a question from uh, Cassandra uh, Maltz, Matz. When it comes to renewable energy, how much land is earmarked for solar? What we, would do is, what we would do with solar, we did this at Rockford too, is we were able to put the solar panels right inside the airport. There we built a 200, well, I didn't build it, but they built it at the same time that we were going in. It was actually built by a, a Chinese company called Wang Sheng, but they built a 240 acre solar park right to the west of the airport. And they also, the airport in the city owned a little business park, I should call it, little, but it was maybe 150 acres and it was built off of that. It, it was right next to that. So it provided power for both that small business park and for the airport. But that was 15 year old technology. You know, technology's changed since then. And from what I understand, the solar panels are much more efficient. And I would say we could squeeze, you know, you could put it next to the runway, really. I mean, or close to the runway. It's not gonna get in the way of anything, but we'll have to see. But I would say 200, 250 acres would, Give you quite a solar panel farm. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of airports now have added solar farms within the fence line that are parallel to the runways. They'll be on top of the run. There'll be panels, I'm sure, on top of the warehouse buildings. And, you know, because out here we're not going to have a lot of uh, shade. There won't be bigger buildings around to shade it at all. Uh, Question from Frank D. Giovanni. Will the South Suburban Airport affect the Rockford Airport? If Amazon oh. was to be interested in becoming a partner with all of the development that they have on the South in the Southland. No, as, as we stated, that you know, we need more cargo airports. We need two major hubs in this cargo hubs in this marketplace. Um, Rockford's run out of space. Uh, the the uh, Milwaukee's taken advantage of that. Rockford, I mean, uh, Gary's taking advantage of that. The growth is going to happen somewhere. It should be in Illinois is what we are, is our point. I know Rockford Airport very well, obviously. And right now they have, you know, they're living the good life. I mean, they're the fastest growing airport internationally, five year cargo airport, five years in a row and 17th in the United States. But, you know, they've kind of run out of space and they're, they're going to flourish. There, we won't, they'll continue to, you know, they got their foot in the ground there and they're, they're a place now and the real location and they'll continue to grow. Another thing about Rockford Airport, which we used to market, and I always asked UPS, you know, why did you go to Rockford, Illinois, when your headquarters is just down in Louisville, Kentucky? And they said, well, you know, the planes that they were flying at the time, I think there were 737s. They said, when flying from Asia, you flew into Anchorage, Alaska to refuel in Rockford was a little less than one tank of gas from Anchorage, Alaska. And their business will continue to benefit from that forever because they're so close, even closer than, you know, it was even um, a little tight to go all the way to O'Hare, but they really like, you know, there, there's an Anchorage Rockford connection there. It will continue to benefit their business in the future. What are the uh, next steps in Springfield to get this long lingering project done? Well, I, I appreciate that question. Uh, we're thinking about perhaps uh, convening a press conference with all of the advocates for the airport, business, labor, uh, elected officials, uh, community leaders, business leaders um, to show the support that we have a united show of support for this airport. So we may be calling on some of you all to participate in a press conference in the next few weeks to push this bill through Springfield, get it through the House, get it through the Senate. Great. Well, uh, we try and keep this thing for uh, an hour. So we're at an hour. So I want to thank Rick Bryant and uh, Paul Ahern for your time today and uh, giving us all this uh, valuable information especially for this project that is going to be a huge engine 
for the south sub suburbs. So I'll turn it over to Terry, Terry Winfrey, close it out. <laughs> Okay, it would help if I unmute myself. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I feel like I've been through a lot of these presentations and every time I still continue to learn more. And there are some additional questions. Uh, so for those that didn't get answered, we'll see if we can answer them. Um, there was a question about can we share the slides, but I can tell you without answering that in that manner, this is recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel. And so, um, in fact, it'll be interesting if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see a year ago, we had a presentation on the same topic. So it'd be nice to see what has changed since a, a year ago. So, so yeah, you'll be able to see those slides via the video. Um, I will check with our presenters and see if they would share them in another manner. Um, but I also would encourage you to check out the Chamber's website. There's lots of great things always happening. And one of our featured things that we have coming up is a workforce development expo and resource fair. And that's Friday, March 24th. And so I would encourage you talk about jobs, talk about like incentives for businesses. Um, so DCEO and Cook County, Will County are gonna be talking about resources that are available, including we will be talking about the governor's proposed budget how it's related to workforce development. So I'll stop with that because there's so much that I could say we could go on forever. Uh, but thank you once again to Rick, to Paul, and also to Ron, and to all of you who took the time out of your busy days to join us for this presentation. So thanks and have an awesome day.